Okay. Well, actually, there are many challenges for the small-scale farmers. One of them, of course, is the climate crisis that we are facing right now. But also because of the geopolitical situation in the European uh, countries, there's also price challenges. So the increasing price of fertilizer and also gas, you know, that can um, hinder agricultural productivity because um, farmers may be difficult to uh, to buy the um, the seeds and the fertilizers. So those are those two big challenges. Okay. Yeah. So how uh, actually the farmers are um, faith, oh, sorry, how they are um, deal with those challenges? How do they deal with the challenge? Okay. For the first one, for the climate crisis, um, farmers have well, believe it or not, but there are also uh, local knowledge that can be. Um, Relearn. So the farmers actually uh, have certain varieties of different, maybe rice or uh, different horticulture that uh, can withstand uh, higher temperature or can withstand um, um, drought that maybe um, have not been looked at before. So looking at what is available on the ground locally. Uh, can help the farmers. But then also collaborating with uh, university, uh, with research institute to produce seeds that can withstand uh, drought is, is very important. So there are many researchers that are conducted by various uh, institutions to help farmers combat uh, the climate crisis. And also another thing that is very important is about um, school. It's like the um, integrated pest management school, but this is related to the climate school. So uh, farmers uh, can be can learn a lot about what is the climate change and how do they have to adapt to that climate change. So there are many ways that the um, farmers can uh, can learn and can adapt to uh, climate change. That's the first one. Mm, the second one about uh, how to overcome the prices, increase of price, you know, that's, <laughs> that, yeah, that, that will be a difficult question. So I, I think this is where the government role comes in, how to provide maybe short-term subsidy or, or help farmers so that, you know, we, we always have to help, especially the small-scale farmer, how they can uh, access uh, input for their uh, um, agriculture. So that's very important. Well, you know, I, I think one of the challenges that we can put forth right now, it's actually the digitalization. You know, with the um, internet coming into the village, and then there's the um, AI, artificial intelligence, and all this technology, um, information technology that is really wonderful. It can really help farmers to become more precise on the um, technology that they're using. Um, it, can, it can make agriculture becomes more efficient, but also at the same time, since it is very heavy loaded with technology, how can farmers access the, the technology? How can they learn about the technology and use it when maybe they're very poor? So this is a disruptive um, technology, one can say. It has many promising um, possibilities to help uh, small-scale farmers, but also it has to be approached very diligently. We have to really think about equality. How is it that especially poor farmers, some small-scale holders, can learn, can access, and can use this to increase their income and, and reduce poverty in general? Okay, okay. So, Prof, you have talked about digitalization in the farmers. Yes. Okay. Ah, yes, that is a dilemma. Yeah, we've we've seen now uh, there, there's uh, data already available that um, the agricultural sector does not have enough young 
community or young farmers. So um, farmers in Indonesia are getting old, and the digital technology is coming in, and since the young um, generation loves uh, IT, etc., I think this is an opportunity also to embrace more young generation of Indonesia to be involved in um, agriculture and to become a part of the movement of digitalization of agriculture in Indonesia. Okay. Well, actually, there's a lot of um, um, uh, uh, policy or uh, the, the T20 recommendation. One of which is this uh, digitalization, and uh, one one of the stress is that um, access to technology is very important, uh, including private sector. Um, private sector, smallholders, and government should open up a platform. Um, together and how global community can be part of the movement for digitalization in agriculture. So that's one of the um, uh, recommendations. Another re recommendation is actually for the food loss and food waste. There's a lot of issue on food loss and food waste and, and so the recommendation in the G20 is how is it that we can uh, track the, the global food loss and also reduce um, the, the food, so, food waste. So recycle, circular economy becomes very important. So that's also one of the uh, recommendations on circularity, urban farming. Um, and of course, um, in, this, in this matter of um, climate crisis, there was also a recommendation on how do we track, um, how, how do we uh, do, doing tracking on policies actually and research that has been conducted by different um, countries, different institutions. Does the research has an impact to actual agriculture um, sustainability? So tracking the research and looking at what the impact of the research is on the policy and then whether the policy recommendation is actually being embraced by the government. So that should come ha hand in hand. That's one, uh, several among the uh, recommendations. Oh, and another thing that is very important is about blue food. Uh, blue food is uh, how is it that when we um, discuss about sustainable agriculture include and food security, including blue food, the f uh, issues on of oceans um, and uh, fisheries culture, how is it that uh, sustainable fisheries and uh, technology becomes part of the food system transformation in the world? Thank you. Thank you all. Um